There's been a lot of talk about how Bitcoin is supposed to be a great store of value and even a hedge against inflation that since it's scarce, it could be worth even up to $100,000 per Bitcoin or more. In fact, Goldman Sachs recently came out with a report suggesting that Bitcoin is eating into gold's market share as a store of value asset and that eventually Bitcoin might even overtake gold. But inflation in the US last quarter was just under 7%, whereas the price of Bitcoin has dropped almost 50% in the same time period. So what's the deal? Is Bitcoin actually a good store of value asset and a hedge against inflation? Can it overtake gold and eventually actually reach that $100,000 per Bitcoin price? target? Let's examine the issue. To put it in the most simple terms, something is only a store of value if everybody agrees that it's a store of value. And if we look at Bitcoin and the price volatility of Bitcoin, it's quite clear that there is no general consensus that Bitcoin is supposed to be a store of value, or at least people cannot agree on what its value should be. A lot of bullish Bitcoin analysts like to use the argument of scarcity, saying that since there's only 21 million Bitcoins in existence, that as demand for Bitcoin increases, people are going to be competing for a shrinking pile of available bitcoins which is going to drive the price up but is that actually true because in reality scarcity does not imply value for example there's only 23 deserts in the world but that doesn't make desert land valuable now obviously that's an extreme example but the point i'm trying to make here is that just because there's a limited number of bitcoins that will ever exist does not mean that those bitcoins are destined to be worth a lot that said it's clear that bitcoin has some value and that people are intrigued about its potential and in fact i think in a lot of ways bitcoin is superior to gold as I'll discuss in a couple of minutes, but there's a few reasons why Bitcoin is still not a reliable store of value. First of all, Bitcoin's newness leads to uncertainty about its future. It's only been around since 2009, so less than 15 years, whereas gold has been used as a store of value for literally thousands of years. Secondly, there's a lot of short-term speculation on the price of Bitcoin, which leads to a lot of the price volatility that we're seeing. Just look at this comparison here between the price of Bitcoin and the price of gold over the past six months and you can see that the difference in volatility is massive. Third, historic ties to black market activities and consistent and ongoing bad press about crypto hacks and scams has led to a bit of a trust issue with the general public. And that's a problem because trust is absolutely essential for something to be a reliable store of value. It seems like almost every week there's a new story coming out about some sort of crypto scam or hack. And granted, they're not all actually related to Bitcoin, but that doesn't really matter in the eyes of the general public, which see all crypto cryptocurrency in the same light. Fourth, and this is definitely a big one, there's currently a lack of government support and acceptance of Bitcoin. When we look at the distribution of who owns gold versus who owns Bitcoin, it's two very different stories. A lot of gold is owned by governments and central banks around the world, which legitimizes it as a store of value asset. With Bitcoin though, there's very few governments that have actually accepted it, El Salvador being a notable exception, but some governments are even banning it altogether. And most Bitcoin is currently owned by either private individuals or increasingly large institutions like corporations. In fact, over 50% of the total Bitcoin supply is owned by just a few thousand people. And that last point actually leads to another risk for Bitcoin as a reliable store of value asset, which is that it's a little bit vulnerable to price manipulation. Because a small number of private individuals or corporations hold a significant percentage of the world's total Bitcoin supply, if one of them or a couple of them decided to completely dump their Bitcoin on the market, it could tank the price completely. Taken together, all of this suggests that while Bitcoin has some real potential for the future, there's still some major roadblocks preventing it from being a reliable store of value asset in the present. But the next question is, is it actually a hedge against inflation? I'm sorry to say that Bitcoin is not currently a hedge against inflation. It might be that in the future, but in order to be true, it first has to be a reliable store of value. And since there clearly isn't market consensus that Bitcoin is a store of value, as evidenced by the wild volatility and price swings. In the short term, it's going to remain a poor investment for people that are looking for price stability in the face of inflation. But what about the future? Can Bitcoin actually take over gold's market share as a store value asset? Maybe. 
Despite all of the issues that I already mentioned, Bitcoin definitely has some serious advantages over gold that could help propel it to capture more market share in the future. For starters, any transaction amount can be sent anywhere around the world in a matter of minutes, which gold obviously cannot. Also, transactions are incredibly cheap, especially for large dollar amounts, because the fees to send Bitcoin from one wallet to another are flat fees. They're not a percentage of the total value of the transaction. So that means if you're sending $5 or $1 billion, the fee is going to be exactly the same. Another major pro for Bitcoin is that it can be stored at a fraction of what it costs to store gold. So picture $1 billion worth of gold. It's going to take up a massive amount of space. It's going to be incredibly heavy. You're going to have to store it in a vault somewhere and probably hire security to guard it 24 seven. But the same amount in terms of the dollar value of Bitcoin can be stored on a sheet of paper or a USB. And all you need to keep Bitcoin safe and secure is to make sure that you are the only one that has access to your private keys. A fourth major advantage, and this is something that I don't believe governments have truly seized on yet, is that every Bitcoin transaction in the history of Bitcoin is completely open and transparent on the blockchain ledger. So that means that anybody can verify where money is coming from and going to. And that's obviously hugely beneficial when we're talking about creating trust in a trustless world. And also you don't have any of the issues that come with, for example, monitoring where gold is coming from and trying to make sure that you're not purchasing gold that was mined in a conflict zone, for example. So with all of these advantages, Bitcoin is definitely growing and seems to have much more potential than gold, which at least partially explains the massive price appreciation in Bitcoin as people rotate their money from other more conventional assets into crypto and into Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's quest to replace gold as the number one store value asset is starting to work slowly. As you can see from this chart, the relative market share is increasing in Bitcoin's favor and cryptocurrency currently has a 20% share of the store value market of which Bitcoin has a significant portion. Also, the amount of gold that it takes to buy one Bitcoin has been steadily increasing and will likely continue to grow in the long run unless something dramatic happens. But can Bitcoin hit $100,000? Now this question is very much linked to the previous question because it depends on whether or not Bitcoin is actually able to grab a significant market share from gold. And the answer is that it might actually be possible. According to the report from Goldman Sachs, if Bitcoin was able to capture a 50% market share of the store of value asset market, then that would mean it would be worth around $100,000 per Bitcoin. If we're hovering around 20% market share currently, that means a lot of growth has to happen first. But as we've seen, it's trending in the right direction. Bitcoin is 100% in an upward trajectory if we're looking at the price of the asset over time but also if we're looking at the number of investors the number of wallets the amount of institutional adoption the amount of countries that are starting to get interested in it and over the next few years i fully expect that we'll see adoption rates continue to skyrocket in the short term i definitely won't be holding my breath waiting for bitcoin to reach those lofty levels but in the medium to long term i wouldn't actually be surprised if it hit the mark we will see though i'm just a guy on the internet sharing my thoughts and my research anyways thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video you might also like this one or this one. I'll see you in the next and have a great day.